Located on the outskirts of Moscow, is a magnificent park and architectural complex with a fascinating history. The story of Tsaritsino Palace dates back to the late 18th century, during the reign of Empress Catherine the Great. In 1775, Catherine purchased the land from Prince Cantimir of Moldavia, as it was a lush vineyard with orangeries, surrounded by pristine nature. She envisioned her new property as a grand summer retreat for the royal family, as well as an iconic estate that would commemorate Russia's victory over Turkey in 1774. She named her estate, Tsaritsino, which literally means Tsaritsa's property in Russian, and immediately enlisted renowned architect, Vasily Bajenev, to design her a palace with surrounding gardens. Bajenev decided to go all out, on this project. His plans were for a majestic garden complex, that consisted of a collection of 20 independent buildings. Instead of a single grand palace, it would come with a set of two matching palaces connected by a greenhouse. One wing for Catherine, the other for her son Prince Paul I. Bajenev's other planned buildings included an opera house, ornate gatehouses, pavilions, cavalry houses, and a kitchen building also known as, the bread house. They would all be styled in a unique blend of Gothic, Classical, and Moscow Baroque, creating an impressive symbol of imperial power, while rivaling the splendor of other European palaces. The Empress absolutely loved it. She approved everything. And construction began shortly thereafter in 1776. Not long after construction began, Bajenev started facing multiple challenges. They included a shortage of skilled labor, as well as a lack of government funds. To meet the Empress's tight deadlines, he oftentimes went into personal debt, just to fund parts of the project that lacked funding. When the Empress paid him a surprise visit in 1885, not only was she shocked by the slow progress, but she absolutely hated the double palace. She described it as a dark place, with low ceilings, narrow stairs, and unfit for living. Though she had many complaints, some speculate that it was the duplex nature of the building, that bothered her the most. She knew that no matter how beautiful the palace, her son Prince Paul I wanted nothing to do with her, and would never live next door to her. For you see, Catherine the Great had always detested her son. And he? Well, the feeling was mutual. He never got over his mother possibly offing his father, back when he was seven years old. Neither did he get over her usurping the throne, and denying him his own right to rule. By 1885, their relationship had deteriorated to an extremely low point. So low, that Catherine much preferred a single palace, just for herself. Of course she shared this with no one. She simply pretended to hate Bajenev's double palace. But deep down inside, it was her son's palace sitting empty, while embarrassing her into perpetuity, that she feared the most. Others speculate that Catherine's disapproval, was due to Bajenev's affiliation with the Freemasons. Perhaps she lacked appreciation, for the Masonic symbols he repeated, throughout all the Tsaritsino buildings. No one will ever know, the true reason behind her sudden change of heart. Either way, after ten arduous years of construction, the Empress made an impulsive decision, to have the twin palace demolished, and rebuilt into one grand palace, that better suited her tastes. She fired Bajenev, and appointed his former student, Matvey Kazakov, as the new Tsaritsino architect thereby sending the disgraced and bankrupt Bajenev, into obscurity. On his deathbed, he would bitterly warn his children, to avoid the construction business like the plague. On the other hand, Matvey Kazakov's plans for the Empress's new palace were well received. And construction started shortly after that, in 1786. Sadly, Catherine the Great would unexpectedly die in 1796, at a time when the palace and its gardens were only partially finished. Sadly, she never got to enjoy any of it. Her successor, the newly crowned Emperor Paul, took no interest in anything that reminded him of his mother. He immediately ordered work on the palace to stop. And the unfinished project was abandoned completely. However, in the early 19th century, her grandson would open the grounds as a landscape park. The first of Russia's imperial estates to welcome in the public. For more than two centuries, the unfinished palace, together with the other structures, remained in a state of disrepair. For the longest time, their neglect and deterioration stood as haunting reminders of Catherine's grand vision, unrealized. It wasn't until the latter half of the 20th century, that efforts to restore the structures began in earnest. By 2005, 
full-scale work was launched by the Moscow government, to fully restore and complete the Grand Palace according to Kazakov's original drawings, as well as the remainder of the complex. In a matter of two short years, Tsaritsino Palace was transformed into a popular tourist destination and cultural center, attracting over 6 million visitors each year. With its stunning architecture, lush gardens, and historical significance, today, Tsaritsino stands as one of Moscow's premier cultural attractions, offering a glimpse into Russia's imperial past. As a visitor, you are welcome to tour the beautifully restored Grand Palace, which features a museum displaying a wide collection of 20th century Soviet decorative art, architectural finds, traditional Slavic arts and crafts, and exhibitions featuring Russia's imperial history. You can also stroll through the picturesque grounds to admire the English-style park. Offering a tranquil retreat from the bustle of the city, the park features vast green spaces, trails, formal gardens, ponds, bridges, as well as fountains. In addition, you can attend a cultural event or concert at the Opera House, the Grand Palace, the Bread House, and even a light show, at the Grand Musical Fountain. Or you can simply tour any other part of the complex, for even more amazing structures of architectural mastery, amazing structures that tend to captivate all, even today.